Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial about how to record an upright piano. Uh, it's been a while since I wanted to make this, tuto this tutorial. It's been a while since I wanted to make this tutorial about how to record an upright piano. Uh, you can listen to some of the recordings I made on my channel, mostly classical music. And yeah, I get these questions asked a lot, like, where do you place your mics? What kind of mics do you use? What kind of program do you use? And I remember when I started recording acoustic about three years ago, uh, you had to gather information left and right, and while well, there's some ton of good info out there, yeah, it's kind of hard to find some information specific to recording upright pianos, and it's all scattered around. So what I'm going to try to do today is try and combine as much information as I can in this little video, uh, show you what I've learned from experience, some general tips on how to improve your recording. So yeah, stick around. What we're going to try to cover today is uh, some general tips on how to improve the sound of your piano before you do any kind of recording. And then I'm going to show you what kind of mic do I use. Um, yeah, I have four of them. It's not that you have to buy these specific mics, it's just some general guidelines uh, on what kind of mic you want to consider uh, when trying to record a piano. And then I'm going to record the same piece five times in a row with five different techniques so we can really, really compare it to each other. Uh, and then you can choose whatever you want uh, to uh, record at home. So yeah, let's start right away with uh, how to improve the sound of your piano. Before you start. Before you start. The first thing you want to do uh, to improve the sound of your piano is make sure that your piano is in tune. <laughs> I mean, it may sound obvious, but uh, if you record with a, an out of tune piano, uh, people will notice and they'll tell you. I've made the mistake myself in the past uh, and I've been working on a piece for a while and I recorded with an out of tune piano and while it sounds okay, but you don't want to start over like two months later when you finally tune your piano. So make sure you tune your piano. Second thing is you don't want to be afraid to move your piano around. Uh, I mean, when you record, when you listen to a performance with a, a concert grand piano and stuff like that, the, the lid will most likely be open and the, the, soundboard, the, the soundboard on grand piano is always exposed. Uh, yeah, you have to understand that. Grand pianos, we have a tendency to put them against the wall, but most of the upright pianos comes with wheels. Uh, you can move it around in, in your place and uh, don't be afraid also to uh, remove the panels from the piano. It will expose the strings, it will expose the hammers, and the sound will just travel more in the room. Uh, you'll get a way, way, way better sound like that. Not only for recording, I mean, I do this once in a while when I, I practice and I want to... Uh, treat myself right, I just move the piano around, away from the wall, panels off, it's just a pleasure for the ears, and you might want to try it. Um, one last thing, you want to make sure that you eliminate any kind of noise that can creep in in your recording, uh, things like uh, squeaky pedals, uh, a TV working upstairs, uh, uh, open the windows, uh, uh, cut your fingernails, all these stuff gonna show up in the recording and it's gonna be audible and, and the, listen, the listener will notice and it can be it can ruin a really good session uh, rapidly so yeah just make sure that you eliminate eliminate any kind of noise uh, make the room completely silent and try to to isolate, isolate yourself from the, the outside noise and the, the noise from the piano Microphone. Microphone. Okay, I'm gonna now show you what kind of mic do I use. Uh, I have four of them, two pairs. Um, you gotta remember that each of these mics will record in mono. So when you set up uh, your program, you wanna have one panned to the right and one panned to the left, uh, like all the way right, all the way left. This is what I do. Uh, you can narrow it a little bit, but I find it, it gives you the more uh, space. That way you can have a really, really great stereo recording. Uh, it might not be the best thing if you want to put it in the mix <laughs> because the piano is going to be all over the place, but uh, for a single piano performance, um, I find it, it sounds the best. So for, 
first off, you're going to have the AKG uh, Perception 220. Uh, it's a large diaphragm condenser microphone. Pretty good as for the reviews when I bought them. Uh, these ones don't come in the pair. Uh, so you want to make sure you buy a match pair. Uh, this, is what we, this is what it's called. Um, you want to make sure the serial number is right next to each other, right next to each other, like uh, blah, 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 106, blah, 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 107, because this way you make sure your the specifications are as close as possible, so you don't have two mics, two of the same mics that don't sound the same. Um, yeah, I, this product is discontinued, but now it's replaced with the uh, AKG Project Studio P220. It comes in black. I don't know if it's the same thing, but uh, large diaphragm condenser microphone. Most people call these uh, large diaphragm uh, condenser mics uh, some vocal mics. Uh, but I find it's good for piano because it captures a really bassy sound. It, it can really go uh, deep uh, in the low frequencies. And piano having such a high Four dynamic points. range, uh, well, it helps. I don't use it all the time, but uh, sometimes it can be great. So pretty good mic. Next up is the Studio Project C4. These are a small diaphragm condenser microphones. Uh, they come in pair for about $350 uh, for the pair. And what I really like about this mic is it comes with uh, removable capsules. You have uh, cardioid, hypercardioid, and omnidirectional capsules. So you get a lot of mic for the money. Um, they sound really great. Uh, it's um, These are called instrument mics. Uh, not called, but qualified as instrument mics. Um, pretty great. Not too expensive. Sounds good. As for the USB audio interface, I use an uh, Akai EAE Pro uh, audio interface. It has four inputs. Uh, this is what I needed. Uh, it's now discontinued, but uh, it's pretty great. Um, honestly, any any USB audio interface will do, uh, <laughs> as long as you have enough inputs for your mics. Uh, I prefer four, because you never know. Uh, when you're gonna end up uh, adding more mics to your setup and uh, yeah but there's pretty good of pretty plenty of good products out there you don't have to worry about that too much uh, just don't go with a cheap 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 stuff cheap stuff you want to make sure they have uh, clean preamps so we don't have, have uh, some hiss and noises in your recording so that's about it for the gear I use uh, let's go for the recordings Piano recordings. Piano recordings. First of all, I wasn't joking about the headphones. I mean, if you listen to this on your iPhone speakers or uh, laptop speakers, stuff like that, you won't notice any any difference between the recordings, so you're losing your time. Um, so yeah, just grab some headphones. So now I'm going to show you the five techniques I use to record a piano. Uh, three of them use two mics, and the last two use four mics. Like I told earlier, um, each of these mics record in mono, so you're gonna have to pan uh, the left one to the left and the right one to the right. I'm gonna show you real quick how each of these mics sound and what happens when you go from dead center to uh, panning left and right all the way. Let's have a listen. The first technique that I show you is a technique you want to use if you cannot remove the panels from your piano. As you have seen in the little videos uh, before, yeah, all the panels are on, the piano is against uh, the wall. Uh, the technique rely on the fact that uh, if your panels are still on your piano, the sound will just bounce inside the box of your piano and uh, end up, uh, uh, well, a part of it will end up uh, going through the top. So that's what you record basically with the mics. The disadvantage of that is uh, that, uh, well, all of this is gonna color the sound of your piano and it will not sound at its best, in my opinion. Well, at least for my piano. So yeah, it's a totally valid uh, way to record a piano, but as you're gonna see in later in the video, it's not the best, uh, in my opinion. Um, 
For this technique, I use the two Studio Project C4 small diaphragm condenser microphones with the cardioid capsules on, uh, pointing inside the piano. Uh, the mics, the mics are about two feet apart from each other. The, mid the middle between them being the middle C of your piano, and uh, it, they are about uh, one feet above the hammers uh, of your pianos. You can play a little bit with the height and the width of the setup, but uh, I find it this way is a good balance between uh, room sound and the piano sound. So yeah, just let's just have a listen. The second technique is a very common technique used. Um, first of all, at least you want to remove the top panel of your piano to expose the string and the hammers. As you'll see, the piano breathes a lot more, but the sound is a bit more percussive as you're basically uh, miking the hammers, hitting the strings. The piano is against the wall, but you can put it away from the wall. Honestly, it won't make much of a difference. You have to watch for nail sound and uh, key noises as you the, the mics are pretty close to the keyboard. For this technique, I use the two Studio Project C4 uh, microphones with cardioid capsules on. Uh, they're about 35 inch away from each other, um, pointing towards the middle C at uh, about a 30 degree angle, I guess. And uh, from the ground, they are at the height of the hammers. Let's have a listen. For the third technique, you want to at least remove the bottom panel of your piano, uh, exposing the strings that go uh, all the way to the bottom. As you will hear, the sound is a lot more bassy, uh, partly due to the fact that I use the large condenser, uh, large diaphragm condenser microphone. Uh, but you'll see there's a lot less hammer noise, and you're basically uh, recording the strings that go all the way to the bottom of your piano. So as you see in the graphic, I use the AKG Perception 220 mics, um, basically on each side of the, the piano bench, um, pointing inwards again, at about again a 20 degree angle. They're about 30 inches away from the soundboard and uh, six inches above the floor. And by the way, be careful not to hurt yourself when getting over your bench. Let's have a listen.
The fourth technique uses four mics. Um, as you can see, the first two mics are in the same position as the third technique, but I add two omnidirectional mics back in the room to capture the room sound and make for a, a more live performance. Um, you can combine any of the three first techniques for the first two mics and add omnidirectional mics uh, to them. It will sound great. Um, it is a good technique if the piano is in a relatively large room. Uh, if you the, your piano is in a small 5 feet by 5 feet room, just forget it. This technique is my favorite, honestly. I find it sounds as close as possible to the what I hear when I play piano at home. The piano is off the wall for this, as I want to, to make the sound travel the more I can in the room. While the recording plays, I'm gonna show you what it sounds for the two mics in the front and the two mics in the rear, so you can hear what each of the two setups sound like, um, and, and then for the rest it's gonna be uh, all the four mics together for your pleasure to hear. So like I said, the mic placement for the first two mics are the same as the third technique, but I had two omnidirectional mics about 9 to 11 feet away from the piano, quite apart from each other, about 8 feet I guess. Let's have a listen. The fifth and last technique is a bit inspired from the fourth technique I use. This technique aims more to, to get a room sound than uh, uh, trying to get a, a dry sound uh, with mics being close to the piano. Um, it sounds more like if you listen to the piano from uh, away than uh, when you're actually playing it sitting in front of it. For this technique, the, the, mics, the microphones that are close to the piano are actually omnidirectional. Uh, so they do capture the sound of the piano from up close, but they also get the the reverberations that travel through the room. And the two away from the piano are uh, the AKG Perception 220 cardioid um, pointing towards the piano. So as you can see on the graphic, the, the, the two omnidirectional mics are about 28 inches away from each other uh, at hammer level. And the two cardioid microphones are about 9 to 11 feet uh, away from the piano, facing towards it. Again, about 8 feet away from each other, at couch level. Let's have a listen.
So now that I've showed you the five different techniques I use, I'm just gonna take this little bit of piece I record with each of uh, those techniques and, and put it all together so you can really, really hear the difference between each of them. Uh, so let's have a listen. So that's it for today, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a lot. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you around. Bye.